Hi all, welcome to day twenty one. This is a Halloween pumpkin which is kept on the ground. I am so 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 super 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 duper excited uh, to teach you how to paint a Halloween pumpkin. I can't remember like there was time when I did not know how to do this, and I'm so super damn excited to get you into this one. Okay, so for this one, um, you need to draw a pumpkin. So basically, your pumpkin would be same as we have drawn in the other past lessons, right? Uh, but then just add eyes, nose, and mouth. To that pumpkin, and you can follow a lot of different shapes if you want to. Uh, in order to do this, right? So, uh, what you want to do? You just want to make sure that your eyes, right? So they have this inner line, inner area. Uh, so tool, right? So you have two triangles basically colliding with each other. Same for the nose, and then for the mouth, now there are too many options. You can also go by a bat, bat shaped uh, mouth or zigzaggy mouth or whatever you. Feel like it would be fun to draw, right? You can have your own variations for drawing a mouth. Okay. Um. Then once you are done with your sketch, so have a great look at it of how you have drawn. Maybe you can copy exactly same or try something new for yourself. But once you are done, right? I just want you to wet the whole paper very nicely. So you know by now because that's the twenty first day. So you know uh, me talking about wetting the paper all the time, every time, right? So wet the paper, just leaving the pumpkin aside. Okay, we just want to make sure that there are no puddles in our paper. Once you are done, we start by making the background. For the background, we can use ultramarine blue, bright blue, brown, oranges, and some greens. Okay, so our sky, which is of blue color, will only be visible at the top left corner. We are not painting blue anywhere in our paper. So that's the sky part that will be roughly uh, visible to us. Okay, you can choose to use cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, bright blue, anything that you want your sky to look like. I'm just giving you multiple options so that you are not stuck anywhere that oh I don't have this color. Now, so I have been giving you guys a lot of options. Okay, now start by putting your oranges or your browns on the paper in the same way that I am doing. Right, so see how my brush strokes are going and see how nicely I just quickly blended that color with the blue. And they just don't even collide with each other, right? So just trying to follow. So I have tilted my brush. I kept my brush horizontally that time, right? So use that, and then put some oranges around the pumpkin now. Okay, so just follow my strokes of how I'm doing or putting the colors. So oranges at the bottom. Um, we actually I'm gonna make grouse in the bottom, but I'll I'll tell you how the process is like. Okay, so we this is all you have to remember, right? Once we draw the pumpkin, this all will be in background. So what we are trying to build in the background, um, it's like a forest, right? So the there there's a forest at the background, and then there's a pumpkin. The focus, the camera focus is on the pumpkin rather than the focus on being the background, right? So that's why we are picking up a lot of elements that we want to put in the foreground. Sorry, background. Okay. So we do. So now I'm adding scarlet on top of the brown or orange mix that we did. So it adds some dark colors, and then around the pumpkin, I think I just want to make it darker. So we'll just go with burnt amber uh, for now. We just want to make it darker, right? Uh, so that my pumpkin basically pops out. Okay, that's the idea. So we'll do some uh, burnt amber uh, on the right side of the paper. And then, guys, blend it. Blend all the colors very nicely. So we are blending every. So we are basically uh, mixing or blending everything on paper directly, right? So you will see putting me lot of colors here and there so that I can have that variation on the background. Okay. Let's add by adding some darker shades on the left hand side also, and then start making them. uh it looked like a tree or something uh that is there right so just a uh, few dab dab here and there for different colors okay so you take burnt sienna orange red uh mix your burnt sienna with a uh, uh, scarlet mix your orange with scarlet and then do a lot of uh, tiny tiny strokes uh, 
to make it look like there is a tree at the background now what we'll do once it is dried up we'll do the detailing or we'll add all the branches over there so that actually looks like a tree but just remember this is the watch this is the first layer of the background that we are doing right we are just only doing a background um so all the detailing part would be done once this is all dry okay Okay, so now taking yellow ochre to paint the bottom of the page, right? Uh, and now you also know that I really, really love to work with on red, and I do a lot of detailings, uh, layerings in watercolor with on red, right? So we're gonna do this ground, basically foreground. This is a kind of grass-like area. But then see the colors that I am putting. Now, so we did just some oranges on top of that um, yellow ochre. <laughs> then I am doing this one sienna now. So yeah, so it's a mix of colors. Then we just lift it and add some greens on it. You see the process, okay? So it's very fun when you know how to play with the colors. It just makes it easier. But then yeah, it will come from practice, 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 practice. Okay. So once you are done adding your uh, yellow ochre on top of that, at some areas you can do your browns, and then start adding your greens. So now you will ask me again why we have not added green uh, directly? Uh, because I just wanted a muted green, and you could have mixed that green in your palette also. Um, but then this actually gives depth to the painting, as I always say, it adds depth to the painting. And um, we wanted a muted green, which is a mix of your browns and greens, basically, right? And then make some grasses out of it. You could have done it on the palette also, but then the feel is different, the method is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, you you can go and try both the methods uh, of what you're comfortable, with, right? So now the background should not be looking very dull in front of what we added. So we added a lot of greens at the bottom, but it, we want to blend that color. Uh, like it just blends into the whole background, right? It should not feel very disconnected. And hence, we uh, I just put took more orange and then blended it all together. Okay. So now adding some scarlet with my oranges to add some more tree details here and there. Very tiny tiny star dots and don't worry like you will think about why we are adding dots now. Where, are, where is the tree branch? So we are gonna you know and I think you guys have learned this now that we are gonna add branches once this is all done. Right? Okay. See how beautiful it is looking, and and believe me, believe me, when we add like lot of uh, so when we add the detailings, it's just gonna pop out and looking wonderful. You already have seen the final image, right? So you will know you know well how it will look like, and that's the tree that I'm making. Huh? So you wonder why we did that brown at the left hand side. It's why it's not like what is that uh, that bulb area? looking it's not looking nice but you'll see all come alive once we are done with the whole process i i also want you guys to start trusting the process when you're painting right so may your artwork may not look like exactly as it should be but then trust have faith in yourself and you will remember remember the basics and everything is gonna tie up together and turn beautiful in the end okay Detailing very important. If you want to make some semi-realistic or realistic artwork, then detailing is what these teensy tiny details are what makes an artwork stand out. Okay, so just always remember that do not rush the process, trust the process, and it will all work out. Okay, so now I'm adding some oranges on top of it because it just went many muted and uh, voila, here comes my splat mini technique. Okay. So just did some quick splatters of the oranges on top of it so uh, they are there now and i don't even have to worry about dabbing dabbing okay the other thing that you could have done for the base was now this uh, splattering also 
to also try using a toothbrush and do the flattening so i'll tell you another method of how you can do a background right so what you do basically if you are using a masking if you have a masking fluid put the masking fluid on the whole pumpkin then do splatter with your toothbrush at the bottom which is a combination of yellow orange and your greens and then do greens more uh, in the layers and then do the top one splattering with the toothbrush with the help of toothbrush similarly the colors that we use are some areas of blues then brown reds and oranges that's how you do it and then remove the masking tape and exactly follow how there's another approach that i've just guided you guys as it right uh and if you feel like you want to check with me just uh, ask me in the discussion forum and then i can let you how to do that we can all discuss that right so now start to paint pumpkin and uh, what we are going to do is i want to make the la one side of the pumpkin lightest and the other would be little bit dark as compared to right but as of now just take one one color that you like basically and paint the whole pumpkin in the same color and do a variation of uh, lemon yellow indian yellow orange and paint your pumpkin okay and then we're going to do we'll use lifting technique to lift some colors and then make it more lighter and okay, don't worry about it so once you do that variation now once you do that contrasting uh, left right uh, your pumpkin will start looking more alive No, it will not come and bite us. But yeah, it will come alive. You, are, you know what I mean now. Okay, so let's start. So you can see now I'm wearing too much. So I took some yellows. I took orange at the starting. Then I put some orange, uh, yellows. Now I'm doing uh maybe darker orange. And then I'm I have left eyes, nose, and mouth. So you also leave all those aside because they will be darker. And then uh, we'll do layering also on them to so make them stand out. Okay, so that that will be separate. very nicely go around the shape of the pumpkin the shape of the mouth the shape of the nose we don't want to mix colors anywhere remember the dark the pumpkin would be darker at the bottom um and lighter at the above uh, for us the light will fall from the right side um on the pumpkin not the background we're not talking about the background now okay so uh, we're going to leave colors from that side now Okay, and once you have added the oranges and uh, all the colors on the pumpkin, just try to smoothen that off, soften that out, and then blend all. Let all the colors that we have put on the pumpkin blend with each other. Okay, and let's make uh, the bottom more darker. So because we, I love or we love to work in layer. So once we are done with oranges, let's put some uh, scarlet on top of it. And then I, if you want to make it more darker, then we may also use bird sienna to make it even darker. Okay. So once you put some color, see I am softening that out, that edge, right? So I just took the color up, but then I dip my brush, brush in water, and then swipe across to make it light, so like blend, uh, soften it. I don't want any hard edges with the different colors. So just soften it. and you know from the techniques class now what is like softening technique so we have used softening technique quite often now okay so we are painting eye but then remember leave uh, one triangle okay so we are just painting only one triangle with the orange the other triangle would be darker rich that actually gives that halloween uh, look to the pumpkin Okay, 
so make the tree uh, teeth um or the mouth sorry to the mouth area also a bit darker around it and then blend again smoothly so blend it okay so you can see me i uh, dip my brush in water come with clean brush and then uh, soften everything so blend everything uh, with each other okay so now for a base version i'm going to do a mix of burnt umber and uh, burnt umber and burnt sienna and then we do a base layer of eye nose and teeth basically these are the teeth okay so we do this and then um, after this is done so this i as i said this is a base layer so once we are done with the base layer then we go ahead and add paint spray to it So don't add immediately if your pumpkin is too wet. It's gonna spread across. So do it very nicely. If you're not comfortable doing it right away, so wait for your paper to be dry and then do the paint. Okay. So I actually waited for my paper to be dry and then I'm doing it. I've just not recorded that process here, but then you can just go ahead and uh, make the paper dry. And if your paper is wet, then do it very calmly, very carefully, very slowly. So go at your own pace. Don't rush the process. Okay. So you're filling all the eye, nose, and mouth with the same color. It can be Vendek Brown. It can be Burnt Amber Plus, uh, Burnt Sienna. Okay. It can be any brown shade that you would like to add. See how it is coming. Okay, so now you feel that because we added some, it it you will would want actually it to be darker, right? So we'll do the dark. Uh, we'll add the paint spray, but then once it is bit to dry, let's do the stem uh, by that time. So I added lemon yellow, and then some orange on top of it at only one side. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and add some greens uh, to it. Okay. Then let's do some detailing on the stem. So the yellow part that was there, we add some browns on top of it. Then go over the green to give it some uh, brown effect. Okay. And then let's add some details. Uh, like line it show that there's a pumpkin, so it doesn't get missed missed out. Okay. So we have to add some darker shadows around the pumpkin. um to make it stand out okay and we want anyways we want to make some grasses around the pumpkin so we we'll go ahead and add some grasses around the pumpkin okay so you can add as per you as in what how many number of uh, grasses You want to vary it, and um, you can also vary the colors. So maybe take some light green color and do the grass so there's a tonal difference in it, right? Okay. So now our pumpkin is actually looking uh, only one color. So and I don't think it's looking uh, very. Uh, so I can't say anything realistic. On that front, we're gonna just lift the color from the right hand side. so uh, the left and the bottom side cannot be lighter why because they are actually at the ground the grass is casting the shadow right the pumpkin is casting the shadow on the ground so the only area uh, that will actually look lighter as compared to the other areas uh, is the upper right corner of the pumpkin okay so just go ahead and lift the colors You still you know the process now for lifting the colors. So we wet our brush in water. We dab it in paper towel. Come come here on the paper. Lift some colors and then repeat the process. Okay. So now the other triangle that we filled with orange. Let's go ahead and make it darker. So uh, do a lot darker orange around it. Maybe mix your color with. Okay. So 
keep lifting until unless you are satisfied with the outcome and if you think that now okay wow it's looking nicer uh, that's where you stop We see how beautiful it is turning out, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, make some tree, so teeth, um, mouth, mouth, nose, and eye area darker. So I'm using my neutral tint to make it darker. You can also use paints gray to make it darker, or even you can bring uh, mix your indigo portion blue with your uh, browns to make it dark. Couple of options for you um, on the colors, right? So you can choose any of these to make it dark. She is now standing out. It's looking so beautiful. Oh my god, I can't believe it's looking so good. <laughs> hey. Okay. So I hope you guys are all happy about painting the pumpkin all by yourself. I can't wait to see your uh, pumpkins. Okay. So uh, similarly, the eye we have done the mouth and we need to cover both the eyes and the nose. Okay. And then do the outline on a different triangle that we actually did in a different color. Okay, that will make it appear as the pumpkin. Okay, now let's think what is left. So I think the area around the pumpkin needs to be a bit dark. So I'm just trying to make it darker and then blend it with the background basically. Okay, so just smoothen that out. So while smoothening my grass is all gone actually. But yeah, I think that that needs to be a bit dark. Okay, so make that area more darker, and then smoothen it out. Basically, soften that out with the help of water or something. Just mix it, merge it with the ground, and then you do same thing um, if required on the ice area as well. Okay? And make some darker glasses okay because once that is darker uh, it will lift your pumpkin okay so you know as in what needs to be dark right and then if you think that it's like too darker uh, maybe lift some colors even if you want to give a bokeh effect there now you can do that also i think that will also look nicer so just take your call So you see now nah, I stop actually I stop I see how it is looking is it looking nice no then I do something to make it look nice I, I wear it to look it magical right see so I was actually looking at what to do to make it stand out and I thought okay wow why not let's let's go ahead and add something then we'll add something in the foreground so it's not look very prominent but it looks very beautiful So my water is at the upside and my paper towel is on the right. So every time I move my hand, hand to the right, I'm basically uh, dabbing my brush or taking out color from the brush on the paper towel or napkin. And every time I go up, I'm actually fetching the water <laughs> or brushing my, washing my brush basically. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some branches uh, for the trees that we have made in our background. Okay. So you can choose to do your own branches, no problem. If you want uh, thin, thick, um, straight, 
whatever right so you just figure out your shape that you want your branch to look like or you can choose to follow me no problem Wow! See how beautiful it is looking. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add more tree branches. Uh, we'll do at the left hand side also. Okay, so you see that I am adding some detailings now. So we add some tree branches. on the left hand side also and then we took out a lot of branches from the main tree and then put some lines here and there uh, that will actually look like there are too many trees okay and then let's do the detailing for the bottom Okay so we are almost at the end So I hope you guys have enjoyed this class I think this was a wonderful um experience for me from starting from day 1 to day 21 Okay so now because that border was looking way too prominent and it was look like looking like a kiddish so I thought of actually washing that out Okay I think I'm done so thank you so much guys for joining me in this class I had you lots of fun um I can't see to I can't wait to see your class project thank you so much this was our last class project I really appreciate each and every one of you joining me in this journey thank you so much guys